Hello YouTube and welcome to another Splunk tutorial. So in this video we will continue our series about Splunk and we will actually see how to detect Active Directory uh, threads using Splunk. So are you ready? Let's get started. So as you have seen on my last videos I showed you how to ingest data into Splunk and monitor the events of Active Directory okay so in this video we will cover how to set up an alerting system to notify us for any suspicious behavior okay so these uh, threads can be like uh, for example logins account lockouts and some actually other things okay so in order to configure that there are some settings that we have to do both on our domain controller and also on our Splunk server, okay? So let's begin by our domain controller, okay? So I will switch here to my domain controller in order to configure actually audits. So in order to see actually logons, we must first enable logon auditing in the policy management okay so here i am on my domain controller so i have to go actually to tools then group policy management so here we go so let me maximize this window here okay so you can see here that my domain name is actually aminos.local and here we have the default domain policy okay so we have to make some modification into this default domain policy in order to audit logins okay so i'll right click on this uh, default domain policy and i will edit it so another window will appear so let's maximize it also and from this uh, window we have to go actually to as you can see here on the left computer configuration policies then uh, actually window settings then after that security settings and at the bottom of the security settings you can see here we have advanced audit policy configuration so i'll click on it and we will find audit policies okay and i will click on this audit policies too and here you can see a lot of what we call uh, sub uh, folders so I'll choose this one, log on, log off, in order to edit some subcategories, okay? So the subcategories that I must actually enable, the first one, audit account lockout, okay? So I'll double click on it and I will configure it, okay? So here I have to configure the following audit events. So of course, I will audit success and also failure. I will apply then OK then also I want to audit log off so I will do the same here I will configure both options apply then OK also for log on so all these audit policies will allow us to log actually when the user log in or log out or get locked out when he's in his session okay so I'll configure also this one for success and failure. Apply that OK. Then also the last two ones audit other log on log off events. Here we go. And finally the last one audit special log on. OK. So you can see here I have enabled five actually subcategories. Okay. So now we are done configuring actually 
our domain controller audit policies okay so now we have also to go to our Splunk interface and configure some actually settings in order to track these threats okay so I'm finished here with my domain controller Ah, one last thing before I forget you have also to make sure that to enforce this uh, default domain policy so here as you can see this default domain policy is enforced so right click on it and this check beside enforce it must be actually checked okay so now I guess we are done with this uh, group policy management so now let's move on to our uh, interface of Splunk and configure some settings okay so this is the interface of our Splunk enterprise so I have to log on sign in actually then here we must do some settings so I have to go to the settings then data inputs okay so after that I have to scroll down till the section of forwarded inputs and here we have Windows event logs so let's add a new one And here as we have set up universal forwarder on the domain controller as you have seen on the last videos actually here my domain controller hostname shows so I have to just click on it in order to select it okay then here I will give it a new server class name so you can give it whatever you want so let's just call it, call it domain controller okay so here we have chosen the forwarder I have to go next so here it tells me it's already exists let's choose another one for example let's just call it DC one for example okay so let's go next and here we have to choose the event logs that we want to track okay so I will add them all okay so as you can see they have been selected now then I will go next for the input settings here we have to choose the index so if you remember on the last videos we have actually dedicated special index for actually our uh, Active Directory domain logs so this index is actually active directory index as you can see here so you can choose it or you can create new one if you want and select it okay then here we have a review of what we have actually done so the server class name is DC1 the forwarder is actually our domain controller the collection name is localhost input type windows event logs and index finally is active directory index and i will submit that so the local event logs input has been created successfully okay so now we can start searching okay so i will just start searching so as you can see here it has selected by default the source is windows event log and index also is active directory index okay so before to proceed with search i will just try to simulate login to our domain controller and see if it appears here okay so let's move on to actually our domain controller and login with our account so here let's choose for example another user so i will log on with uh, an account called amina and here i will type its password okay so now 
I have login using this account Amine. So let's try to catch it in our actually Splunk. Okay, so this is our Splunk. So here actually I can add another filter to filter actually just logins. So for the successful logins, the event code is actually so event uh, code is actually equal to four six uh, three or two four. So this event code means successful login. Okay. So let's filter by that. And here I have just chosen the 30 minute window to get just the last login. So this is our event. So you can see here the event code is 4624. So if I click on this show all 70 lines, I can get more information. So you can see here the event code associated with the 4624 is actually here. An account was successfully logged on. So we can track any actually successful log on. Okay. And here we see the different uh, information associated with this event. Okay. I can even add another filter so I can filter by the account name. So if I add for example here account name Amine which is the login that I used in order to log on to my domain controller I can just filter with it. So I will begin our search. And here we go, we get our result. So let's see actually the 70 lines. And here we go, you can see here the account name is Amine. And it corresponds to the event of account was successfully logged on. Okay. I can also filter by another event which is this time uh, 4634 uh, so this actually event code means that uh, log off actually happens okay so if you want to see all log off events you can just type this event code here 4634 okay so now let's try to catch actually failed password, okay? So I will return back to our domain controller and let's enter for example three false password, okay? So here let's simulate failed login, okay? So for example I will enter just a random password, the first time, the second time, okay? And the third time. Okay, so let's now return back to our Splunk and see if we can catch these failed logon which actually simulate an attack. Okay, so here for the query I will just use failed password actually. Okay, and I will search for that. And here we go, you can see that I get a result for the failed password. So if I show all 61 lines now, I can see an account failed to log on, okay? So it's actually a Microsoft Windows Security Audit event. And here we have which logon failed, it's of course 
account name with the username Amina as we have actually tried to do. But the beauty of Splunk, we can actually save that as an alert, okay? So here you can see there is a menu for save as, so I can choose it and I can choose an alert, okay? And here for the title, I can give it whatever I want. For example, let's call it domain controller felt logon, okay? And for the schedule, I will just run it not every week, but I will choose here run on cron schedule, okay? And the time range will be actually last five minutes. So for the last five minutes, or last 15, doesn't matter, okay? Here it expires on 24 hours. So the number of result here will be if greater than, for example, three attempts, okay? I will trigger once and I can suppress triggering for example, 10 uh, minutes. Okay, and here I have to trigger action, so I will add an action here, add to trigger alerts, okay. And here I can choose the severity, so let's choose high, okay. So this is all the settings that we want actually. And we can just save that. So here just alert because I'm using uh, Splunk Enterprise trial lessons okay so I can go to additional settings and set permissions here so this alert the owner is admin the application is search and display for the owner okay so now let's simulate that. So let's go actually to our domain controller and try for example for false password. So in order to trigger the alerts, so I'll try just some random password here. So of course hackers user use actually some special application like John the Ripper or brute force attack in order to simulate that. And hopefully, let's go now to our Splunk and see if we get this alert. So here we have to go to the activity and triggered alerts. And if voila, as you can see, the alert has appeared. Okay. So here, just make sure to choose for app search and reporting. Okay. And of course, we can view the result here, okay? For the failed actually attempts. So you can see we can actually uh, use alerts in order to inform us whenever there is failed attempt to the domain controller, okay? So that was just a brief video to show you how to detect actually Active Directory threats using Splunk. As always, I hope it has been informative for you and I want to thank you for viewing. Bye-bye!